G'day guys, so I hope everybody out there is well. A um, couple of weeks back on Instagram, um, some of you who follow my channel might notice I posted a picture of Orion, and that's a picture I took um, with the Newtonian here. Now, again, other people who watch the channel know I've had this Newtonian now for maybe, I can't remember now, maybe four months or something like that. Um, it's been a really good scope, but one thing I have started to find with it is, or I started to find is that, um, I start to get sort of strange stars in some of the corners of my um, field of view um, and you know like most people you know I, I thought it was related to collimation so I kind of did the normal thing that people buy and it was the it seemed the easiest way to go so I did get myself you know at the beginning one of these um, collimators um, of course the issue with these is that they're fairly cheap and the collimators themselves are sometimes out of collimation so basically if you put this on something where you can spin it around and you follow that laser dot against the wall you can often see that the actual laser itself isn't centered which of course makes it it's not going to be very useful then for collimating your scope because you're, rely, you're relying on that laser being centered um, as a reference point and um, so basically even though this laser was showing that my primary and secondary looked centered um, it didn't seem to be working and I was still getting these stars these elongated stars so I started like most people I did the whole um, the next step was YouTube and um, Google and I started trying to have a look around to see what could be causing these issues the second issue I was having apart from that was I was getting this sort of uneven vignette in pattern as well when I was taking my flat frame so I saw something was out there so I was thinking it could be one of a couple of things and after reading more online um, I found a few processes out you know often laser collimators don't always have the best um, sort of reputation and a lot of people say you're better off with just one of the eyepieces um, so I've, I did a couple of things um, first thing check this is still recording all right yep so the first thing I did I did stick with a laser collimator because I still wanted that convenience but I got one of these collimators from Farpoint Astro so they're American made um, and basically you get two pieces in this kit you get your laser collimator now this is machined out of a single piece of aluminium and also it comes with a sticker when you get it to basically say um, I can't remember exactly what it is but that you don't need to check the collimation because it's sort of guaranteed to be in collimation I did check it and it was it could have been a fraction out but it was it was nearly perfect so that was good um, and you also get this little peephole sort of eyepiece that you can use as well that you can put into the um, the two inch drawer there and again that's really nice nicely machined as well so I got that to start with um, and moving on from there what I did is I looked um, looked on the um, internet and I found a, a kind of a vague process of what to do and, and how to go about how to go about collimation sort of in its entirety and what I found is that the first part of that process a lot of people are telling you to first make sure that your secondary mirror is actually centered and that it's rotated correctly and the easiest way to do that um, is to use this piece put this into your focuser with the peephole here and then you can actually focus on the just the secondary mirror and making sure that that secondary mirror looks centered and it's got a nice even concentric you know gap around it um, and at least then you know that you're to begin with that your secondary mirror is is, is centered in that space um, what I did find a bit tricky is that because you get so many reflections it can be hard to I found it quite difficult to actually pinpoint what was the secondary mirror to begin with it was like sort of plays tricks on your eyes so one thing I found and found recommended was just using pieces of card to stop the reflection from the secondary mirror so I'll show you how I'll, I'll show you how I put these in I basically use a clip what I'll do is I'll do this I'll put these in and then I'll bring the camera and just show you what I've done 
Okay guys, so just looking at this here, basically all I've done is I've used a stretched piece of, a folded piece of white card here, just used a clip, and I've put that down the tube past the secondary mirror and just folded it. And what that's doing, it's just gonna stop that reflection coming back. Then opposite the focuser, put like another piece of colored card in there, whatever color you've got handy. And all that'll do, it'll give you contrast so you can actually see that gap around your secondary mirror and you can easily focus on it without worrying about those reflections. So I found that really easy to help. And of course, then what you would do is use your little eyepiece here and put that into your, put that into your focuser tube there. And then you can concentrate on basically getting that secondary mirror you know, rotated um, and nice and even in that field of view. Okay, so I'm just gonna try, if I can guys, and show you. So this is kind of the view that you're gonna get. Of course, you're gonna have your little um, eyepiece in there to help you to help, um, center, your, center your eye down the focus tube. But that's the kind of view that you're gonna get and you're gonna be trying to get that secondary mirror nice and centered with that nice, you know, sort of circle around it. So you know that that's, um, you know, not too high or not too low. You're gonna do that by using these screws here at the front, if I just point to them. So basically these, these screws down here, you got these three screws here. So if you just loosen these, um, you're gonna be able to twist and rotate that mirror around um, and get that nice and, get that nice and centered. Um, and then depending on how your mirror is looking, you can also use this center screw as well, which will enable the mirror to go forwards and, and backwards. Okay, so once you've achieved that with the secondary mirror and you're happy with how that's looking, what you can then do, and I'm just gonna try and show you here through the um, camera on my phone, is because you know you've got the secondary nice and centered now, to get yourself started to make sure the primary is centered, what you can do is you can start to look again through your little eyepiece, um, your little peephole in your eyepiece, and what you wanna do is just try and get that primary mirror um, with a nice concentric circle around it onto your secondary mirror. So you kinda, I know this is difficult to show in a, in a diagram here, and I will put a, I'll put a diagram up in the video to help demonstrate this, but you just try and then to get the, the mirror um, centered um, on your secondary mirror. And again, you're kind of looking for that even circle around your secondary mirror that's going around the, the primary. And that'll just get you started, so, you know, roughly sort of aligned, and then we can, we can put the laser in. What I've done is I've gone and put my laser collimator in here. Um, and then I'll try and show you this as best I can. Um, see if I can sort of focus it. But then if you can see it at the back of the tube there, in the center of the mirror, that you can see, you can see that the laser is now into the center of the primary mirror. And again, what we're doing now is we're just gonna, we just wanna make sure that our secondary mirror is dead centered, um, so there are, you know, with the, with the primary. So what we can do now is that we can, if we're just out a little bit, what we can do is just start to use these screws just to get that laser so it's dead centered in that little donut or whatever marker that you've got on your primary mirror. All right guys, so for this final step, this is a bit, this is quite tricky to show, but again, I'm gonna try and use my camera up to the, um, the peephole here in the eyepiece. And basically, We've got our little eyepiece in now, a little far point eyepiece, and what you can see at the end is, you can see inside the sort of primary mirror, you can see a white circle, which is the reflection on the inside of the eyepiece, and then inside that white circle, you can actually see um, the donut on the primary mirror. And again, what you're looking for here is a nice, even black circle around that donut to let us know that our primary mirror is nice and centered, and um, so everything's lined up. So sorry about the images here, how it keeps changing, but that's basically what you're looking for. Okay guys, so that's pretty much the process that I've um, found has helped me now get my stars looking pretty good the whole way around the frame. Um, of course, the whole thing 
is dependent on the fact that you're using some sort of coma corrector. Obviously, you're not going to get perfect stars around your frame without a coma corrector. But now I've found that through going through those adjustments now and going through that process, and it will definitely take you, or it took me, um, quite a few attempts at doing this. Um, it's, it, there's, there's quite a lot of nuance to it, and there's also variables that I've not explained here. So, for example, the little spider veins here that are held in with screws, you know, you could have the issue that maybe one of these has been tightened up or slackened too much, so these are not even, so you're, it's quite hard to get your secondary. So if you have real problems, it's probably worth checking those as well. Um, the other thing that you always want to check, probably right at the beginning, before you even start changing anything like this, um, especially if it's just the vignetting on the flat frames, is you want to rotate your camera um, 180 degrees. Um, now, if your if your flat frame stays the same problem, then that means that you've got an issue, basically, with your uh, tilt in your camera sensor. Um, but if your flat frame, basically, if the whole thing moves 180 degrees, so wherever you're getting an uneven patch on your flat frame, then that means that there's actually an issue somewhere else. So it's the issues in your optics. You know, whether it's your mirror collimation, whatever it is, your focuser, draw tube. Um, so that's a good test that you should do right at the beginning. Just try that rotation and make sure that it's nothing to do with your camera sensor um, first. Um, the other thing as well that I'll say is that you probably noticed as I was checking the primary at the end there. So you can use your, obviously use the um, eyepiece like I said here that you get. But you can also use your laser again. Now because of the length of the focuser tube on a scope like this, you can't see the return, you can't actually see down here the return laser hitting um, to, to try and correct your primary. So obviously the laser goes down and you can see the laser in the center of the, the primary mirror, but then it bounces back up. And then normally you can use the return laser as a reference point to see is your primary centered, and which is what this piece is used for on a normal um, laser collimator. But because of the length of the tube on this and the length of the actual collimator, I found that I can't, you can't actually see where the return laser is coming in. However, if I did look down the secondary, if I look down the, um, the tube here, you can actually see down on the primary, you can see that second laser bounce that's re rebounded, um, rebounded back down to the primary mirror. So you can actually also check it that way by just basically looking at the primary mirror and you'll actually get two, you'll actually see there's two red points on the primary. Um, so you can also use that as a way to correct your primary mirror collimation if it's off. Um, yeah, so I did find there's a lot of information out there on the internet. The problem is like anything, deciphering which problem that you have, which is why I kind of started from the beginning um, and I went through that whole process of putting the card in, checking my secondary mirror. Um, I got myself a decent laser collimator. Um, Although I think this is probably one of the most important pieces, even a, I think even a cheap one of these is, or even if you use a, a plug, I've seen some people just use a plastic plug where they put a little hole in, that's fine as well. Um, but I find that a lot of these really cheap laser collimators, they're not really, they're not really very good and you can end up in a circle of thinking that you've fixed an issue where you've still got one. Um, so I'm by no means an expert on collimation but I did just want to put this video out because I found that this, at least for me, has corrected the stars in the corners. Um, I was getting trailing stars similar to what you get when your backspacing is wrong, but I was only getting them like in two corners or one corner, but not at the bottom. And I think now I've managed to go through this process and get everything, get my mirrors much more lined up. It feels like it's helping a lot. So. I hope that's helped a little bit. If anybody's going through the same issues as me, maybe there's a little tidbit in there that you can take away, I don't know. Um, but I'll um, say goodbye for now, and um, please subscribe or like the video if you haven't already, and if you've enjoyed it. 
and um, I'll leave you with that image I took the other weekend um, of Orion. It's, um, it's not a lot of data, but it's still quite a nice, uh, nice close-up image. So um, catch you guys later, and thanks for watching.